Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a closer look how to get the Kantiki working on a Commodore 64 and get it online. Uh, recently I've been doing a lot of research on the internet and everything I find is very badly done. So I'm gonna take it, you know, piece by piece, step by step, how it's gonna work. How are we going to get this beautiful Commodore 64 going online? So, this is what you need. You actually need some kind of network interface for the Commodore 64. Um, I have been trying to get the RRNet the MK3 working. And I've done it in the past and it's working. You really need it. Or you can also get the standard um, RR uh, net, and then you need something like this retro re replay. Uh, and you can choose to install a bunch of different firmware to it, uh, and so on. You also, of course, need an internet cable, and you will need. Give me a second. You will need some kind of floppy to put the actual uh, media on. I mean, we're gonna create things to load into the Commodore 64. So that one we also need, and you need uh, probably a working drive. If um, a 1541 is good or similar. Anyhow, let's get to it. So, we have plugged in, as you can see there, our nice device. Um, when you're turning on the machine, this is what you get. All right. And there are a few things you need to check out before you just pop this one in and go out to the internet. Um, you need to find out, or actually, you need to flash this beautiful RRNet MK3 device. Um, with a, its IP address, and how how do I how do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. As you can see, hold down Commodore key at reset for CodeNet. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Or actually, I'm going to try to do it with one hand because uh, I have fired my cameraman. Sorry. And so here we go. Uh, as you can see here, we have the CodeNet IP address, and it's in my case 192. Yeah, you can see dot 64, and this is really important to have because without this, there's no way that you're gonna get the uh, Connecti, uh, Contiki. I mean, to work with the machine. So we have given it the IP of 64 there at the end. Bam! Here we go. Alright, but it's not really going to work, no, because we need to plug in the IP, uh, actually the TP cable, but bef before we are doing that, we are going to get ourselves, yeah, you see, um, I hope you can see, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm doing this my way, I don't care what to say about the camera and everything, give me a camera and everything and I will do it for you properly, okay, enough, so good, go to... Uh, c64web.com and in, in here we have some um, s some um, configurations that we, we, we are gonna work with uh, with it first you need to click on the Commodore 64 and here you can choose what the Ethernet card you ha are having uh, you can see there are a lot here and I have the RRNet and so on and so on Everything is looking fine so far, except for this. By default, this is set to 111, and that is not going to work, because remember, uh, we set our RRNet uh, on the Commodore 64 to uh, dot .64, so that we need to change and type in 64. Oh, my hand is really steady today, so there's no problems about that. I need to press enter. Oh yeah, of course, uh, sorry, we are going a little bit ahead here. Um, anyhow, uh, in here you just type in your submask and default gateway uh, way and the DNS server. 
this is yeah this is for me good you can either choose to just download the configuration file only or the complete image of disk 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 but yeah I think you just need like you need a f yeah it's up to you how much you want to work uh, I mean how much you want to download and so on um, so you press download and it will save to I have already saved this so it doesn't matter it it saves it to the uh, to the computer and after it's saved to the computer you will need to write it to a floppy disk like I said before so let's do that uh, oh by the way I'm using a zone floppy for that so it's it's kind of speed of light to do that so I will be right back in a second well we are back so um, the images has been written to the floppy and the floppy drive is connected nothing fancy there uh, also we have connected the ethernet through the uh, the RRnet and so on so what we are doing first is to load not that but the first file from the floppy um, that's the kind of the protocol so we're just gonna see that things are hooked up in a good way and this is gonna take a while I can tell you because we're not using a fast loader this is the stock Commodore 64 so yeah bear with me so to speak wow this is kind of even slower than you know tape loaders in a way because yeah at least it has some music going on so um, that is also why this little device you can't see anything okay but yeah that's the you know you know what it is so it's big if we're gonna shred some lights at it you can see it yeah that's the one so the next step is actually to <laughs> install it because yeah we, we need to have some speed but anyhow for this purpose this is what we're gonna do and this is what's going down, so to speak. And we start it. And we see. We see that the IP address is set to the correct one. And we can use the the function keys to scroll down here and this is what I said before is so important but yeah you can change this in after afterwards you can change this actually but this is like I said before that's my configurations and they are working fine so we're gonna save and close just like that so it writes the file Um, next up is uh, to, well, I'm just going to reboot the Commodore 64. Um, and now we are going to um, see what's uh, what, what's on the floppy, so to speak. And we're going to rest by that. And we see we have um, quite some stuff here. That's the DHCP, and we have the web server, web browser, and we have the we, uh, WGET the IRC and we have a bunch of other actually I'm not gonna bother I'm just gonna use the use I'm gonna load the web browser because yeah I'm not even gonna bother to install the retro replay actually this time we're just gonna yeah we're gonna do it as uh, unique as possible if you know what I'm saying and I have uh, also hired a cameraman now, which holding the camera pretty still. Um, what more to say meanwhile? Not too much. Just gonna be, stay quiet. It's that time of the year. Uh, 
actually I'm gonna speed up a little bit here I think oh it's been loading that's what we need I'm just gonna clear the screen and do like this So now it's just been loading everything. Um, this is well. I'm gonna I'm gonna excuse me for the cameraman, but he's not doing the work properly now. If you see there, that's where you kind of type in your things. So we're gonna do it. We we're gonna use the function keys and go to the uh, browser, and we're gonna go. Uh, well, I'm just gonna. Uh, what can I take? Um, let's just do this. Uh, .ch. Um, and we can see here that it's receiving the page correctly. And we can see we have home tools, MUs, etc. etc. So we're just gonna go down there to let's take tools. That, that sounds excellent. Of course, you are not gonna see any fancy graphics, not in this environment. There is there is something for that. Um, it has stopped, so unfortunately it used a lot of things. But we're gonna we're gonna continue. We're gonna see some kind of text. That's what I wanna see. Um, I think if I remember correctly, if we go to tools, we can see something at least. Yeah, and if we go down, we can, we can of course scroll down to the uh, down the page. Uh, we should be able to see something. And why not go to uh, the about? The about should just be some kind of text stuff, I suppose. And if we're going down, oh, I mean, if we come on, don't do this to me. If we are going down here. Going down, down, down. Keep in mind, this is, I mean, you have the whole IP stack here and TCP IP stuff, so this is kind of fast in a way, you know. But we can see that things are actually working. We are, yeah, we are in. So uh, the goal has been successfully achieved, actually, and uh, uh, and yeah, like I said, this is it. We're gonna check out uh, the backside of the floppy to see what's on that one. So um, I'll be right back. Ta ta! Look, we are here. So here we have. Uh, we have the um, Contiki configuration file and the DHCP. So I hope I hope this is working out of the box, so to speak. It should because I created that uh, uh, image from that site. So we're gonna load the bread box 64. It sounds uh, interesting enough. Ah, we are in like the fig. Uh, so let's uh, run and hope for everything to be working. <laughs> Whoa, it's a Twitter thing. All oh, right. Oh well, I should have known. Um, well, I don't have I don't have this Twitter account, of course. But yeah, whatever. It seems to be a Twitter. The Twitter client for the Commodore 64. That is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that's good. Hmm, sorry, but I didn't know what it was. But it's well, I don't have the super tweet. So yeah, whatever. This is also something cool, actually. So um, <laughs> I felt like I wasn't really fair with. Uh, with a web browser program. So we're gonna take a little. 
uh, well, a bit of an ex inspection here. And this is a, a TB03 site, which goes through like notifications of, um, yeah, you know, of uh, that, that fine device. It's actually the Devilfish modification for the TB303. I thought it was a good site to go to. So he, he, this is focused very much uh, on text. So as you can see, it's well, you can actually see the read the text and everything. I mean, this is this is awesome actually that, that you really can. Well, of course, you cannot read the PDF files, but still, that you can read text and, and you know just browse around. Uh, and just, I think this is this is cool. And you can even set up your own web server. I I, I saw that um, uh, that there was a program for it. So, but anyhow, we have completed the goal. The goal was to get the RRNet MK3 connected to the Commodore 64, get it out. To be able to speak to the internet and we succeed the goal so as always leave comments do 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 down below and well I will see you guys in another one thanks for watching